Welcome to an introduction to dragonflies and damselflies. During this short talk, I'm going to introduce you to the history of the dragonflies and damselflies and to the differences and similarities between the two groups. The first dragonfly ancestors are found in the fossil record around 300 million years ago. That predates the age of the dinosaurs, so this is an extremely ancient group. The first modern dragonflies are found in the fossil record about 250 million years ago. And those dragonflies look very similar to the dragonflies and damselflies we see today. Count yourselves lucky that you're not being asked to do dragonfly and damselfly surveys 300 million years ago, because those ancient dragonfly ancestors included the largest insects that ever flew. Megan Europus had a wingspan that measured some two and a half foot across. You'd need quite a big net to catch that one. We'll start then with a basic guide to the anatomy of a dragonfly. It has a head with two compound eyes positioned close together, a thorax and a segmented abdomen with anal appendages. The leading edge of the forewing is called the costa and the wings have pterostigma, which are areas of dense cells used for flight control. The damselfly has a similar anatomy, a head with widely separated eyes in this case, a thorax, a segmented abdomen, with the anal appendages. The forewing has the costa, the leading edge, and pterostigma. Differences between male and female dragonflies and damselflies can vary from species to species. Quite often, the most obvious difference is the body color. Males tend to be bright and garish, females not so much. But there can also be differences in the shape of the body, including wasting in the abdomen and the presence or absence of a club-shaped tip in the females because of the presence of the ovipositor. Because the males are often more brightly colored and more conspicuous and more well marked, we often focus on the males for identification purposes. So if we look at the features that indicate we found a dragonfly, they include the fact that they're larger and more robust looking than the damselflies. They have generally a shorter and stockier appearance. Their eyes are larger and close together, indeed almost touching in most cases. The hind wings are usually shorter and broader than the fore wings. And they're strong flyers. They can often be found well away from any known source of water. And when resting, they hold their wings out to the sides or slightly forward. The damselflies then are longer with slender looking bodies. Their eyes are widely separated on stalks either side of their head. Their wings are of roughly equal size, fore and hind wing. And they're weaker flyers and tend to stay much closer to sources of water. When resting, the damselflies will lay their wings either fully or partially back along the body. That brings us then to the end of this very brief introduction to the dragonflies and damselflies. In the next presentations, I'll bring you through the individual species and the key identification features of each. In the meantime, if you want to find out more about the Dragonfly Ireland survey and how to get involved, please visit biodiversityireland.ie and click on the Dragonfly Ireland tab.